Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical, and today for you guys, we've got some Kingdom Hearts 3 as well as Kingdom Hearts 2.8 news and information. So, if you guys don't know, recently Tetsuya Nomura has actually gone ahead and answered a lot of the community questions to do with 2.8, Kingdom Hearts 3, the Kingdom Hearts Premium Theater event, as well as Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. Now, for this video, we're going to be focusing primarily on the Kingdom Hearts 2.8 and Kingdom Hearts 3 questions. I might get around to talking about the Unchained Key stuff as well as the Premium Theater stuff, but in all honesty, it's not too kind of interesting. So if you guys want to check out this whole kind of blog for yourself, I'll leave the link in the description below and you guys can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, guys, without further ado, let's get on with it. First of all, we'll be starting off with the Kingdom Hearts 2.8 questions, and then we'll get into the Kingdom Hearts 3 questions. In Kingdom Hearts 0.2, Yen Sid tells Riku and Kairi that it is imperative to rescue Aqua, Terra, and Ventus, prompting Mickey to tell them of his recent visit to the Realm of Darkness. Is he referring to the time in the first Kingdom Hearts when he ventured in to find the Kingdom Key D? Tetsuya replied, it is an episode that I was waiting a long time to tell. Please wait for Kingdom Hearts 0.2 for that answer. So of course, you know, Tetsuya Nomura isn't going to straight away um, just blatantly answer that question right off the bat. Currently, it is unknown what time he visited the Realm of Darkness that he's actually talking about in that very short cutscene that we got to see in the trailer. What we do know is that, of course, Mickey did go to the Realm of Darkness and that he did actually meet Aqua there. And this follows up in the next question. Did Mickey meet Aqua during his time in the Realm of Darkness? If so, why did he refrain from speaking of such an important matter until this moment? Tetsuya replied, this will also be told in Kingdom Hearts 0.2, so please wait for it. So once again, Tetsuya is not answering uh, <laughs> another question, which I kind of find strange um, that they would add both of these questions in here just when he like doesn't really give any kind of information on it. I mean, we already know that um, Mickey did meet Aqua in the Realm of Darkness, as he mentions it in the trailer. So I don't really see why that question is necessary, but still to the point, uh, we do know that Mickey actually met Aqua in the Realm of Darkness, and the fact that Mickey is going to be explaining a lot of secrets, quote unquote secrets, in Kingdom Hearts 0.2. But, um, one thing that is pretty important is the fact that, like, yeah, why did Mickey take so damn long to bring up, um, specifically Aqua and that fact that, you know, like, he met her and stuff like that, she's currently in the realm of darkness. I mean, I'm sure that Riku and Sora, like, probably could have done something about the whole situation. I mean, perhaps maybe Mickey felt as if, like, everyone was so occupied and, you know, they were so kind of, like, um, busy working on different goals to do with saving the worlds, taking down, like, Ansem and Xemnas, that he felt like, you know, Sora and Riku and the rest of the gang really didn't have enough time to kind of worry about Aqua. Either that or Aqua's actually fine. Perhaps maybe Mickey left Aqua a mission to do in the Realm of Darkness, who really knows? And I think that's going to be one of the most exciting things about 0.2. Just knowing what actually happens to Aqua. I feel as if she's actually kind of better and safer as we may sort of presume, you know. Uh, at the moment, we know that she's in the realm of darkness and a lot of speculating that, oh shit, you know, Aqua, she's in trouble. She's in the realm of darkness. She's probably like, you know, just trapped there, stuck there. She's a prisoner of the realm. But I actually think it's a better situation than that. Now we'll jump into the Kingdom Hearts 3 questions. The conversation between young Xehanort and Ericus, first shown at E3, is the opening scene of Kingdom Hearts 3. Since then, more and more of the scene has been revealed through the trailers and at D23. We were able to view it in its entirety. Why was the decision made to show the scene in this manner? Tetsuya replied, there are many reasons for this, but one of them is that we are prioritizing the creation of new worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3, and we would have to consider the reveal timing of those worlds, making sure that we discuss it with Disney. That opening scene is very versatile since it doesn't involve those new worlds, plus it's a great asset to use as a prologue to build up excitement towards Kingdom Hearts 3. Also, the scenes that we currently have released is not the final product, so please look forward to any changes that we may make in the future as well. So what they're saying from this is they can't always show brand new worlds and whatnot in um, the different Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers that they release, because for one, these worlds aren't fully created and developed, 
And secondly, they actually do have to discuss it with Disney in terms of when they are going to reveal a brand new world in a trailer. This is probably why we didn't actually get to see Big Hero 6, like in the form of a trailer and actually getting to see the world in game during D23 Anaheim, but rather we got the concept because of the fact that the world probably has very little development towards it, if not no development whatsoever, and plus Disney probably had some sort of rules applied to not actually showing the world, but in terms of just simply announcing it with a concept. They're mentioning here that showing this conversation is very versatile because it doesn't reveal um, anything too much, and the fact that it doesn't actually take place in a quote-unquote kind of new world. It has been speculated that this conversation is taking place within the land of departure, but still that's kind of like a 50-50 thing. It might be in a completely different area. But then again, I just, you know, I highly believe that this is taking place in the land of departure. Also, what I do find interesting is um, the conversation isn't actually in its final products. Now, they might actually make changes. So it is going to be interesting to see what kind of parts of the conversation um, are going to get kind of removed that we've seen so far in the final product of Kingdom Hearts 3. It's definitely going to be interesting to look back on that when we eventually get the damn game. We learn from Xehanort and Ericus's conversation that Ericus is under consideration for masterhood. But what about Xehanort at this time? Tetsuya Nomura replied, I'm sure that you can sense that there is some kind of thought behind Xehanort's expression and tone of voice at the end. Xehanort's interest is something other than a title of honor. So yes, that is correct. Xehanort seems extremely kind of suspicious um, within the trailer that we of course get to see their conversation. Um, you know, he's talking all towards like, um, you know, the future has been written and the fact that, um, you know, Ericus mentions that there is more to light than kind of meets the eye and he's saying, I hope so. It's almost as if, you know, um, he's already seen one of the tomes of prophecy and this is kind of relating back to the whole quote unquote traitor or six member of the foretellers and the fact that perhaps that member might actually have some sort of relation to do with Xehanort. Who really knows, but he's mentioning the future, he's mentioning light and darkness, and it already seems as if, you know, Xehanort at that age already had some sort of interest towards the whole, you know, darkness factor of, you know, different things. It's very, very interesting and it perhaps kind of goes to show that Xehanort's corruption may have started at a very, very early age. And that's one kind of thing that I'm really looking forward to, kind of seeing, you know, when Xehanort exactly became kind of interested in this whole, you know, darkness factor and the whole future events and stuff like that. Perhaps, maybe, he was interested in, you know, Kingdom Hearts and all of that sort of stuff, you know, from the very beginning. Um, perhaps maybe he is a reincarnation of the Foretellers or something, something crazy like that. I mean, it's definitely not out of Square Enix's reach to do something that far-fetched. Trust me, this is Square Enix we are dealing with. It was surprising to see the return of nobodies in the recent Kingdom Hearts 3 footage. What sort of role will they play in the game? Can we expect to see any more enemy types beside nobodies and Heartless? Nomura replied, I want to make it so that you can tell who had come to that world by the enemies that appear there. I am thinking of the enemy types as part of a total production this time around. So first of all, I just want to say that this is an amazing answer right here. Um, I want to make it so that you can tell who came to that world um, by the enemies that appear. So, of course, uh, in the recent trailer uh, for the Kingdom Hearts 3 footage, uh, we got to see these kind of Malusha type uh, nobody enemies in the uh, Rapunzel world, which is absolutely amazing. Of course, we got the first sort of uh, details from D23, as that footage was shown at D23 uh, in November. But um, who exactly is he referring to when he's meaning like, I want to, you know, kind of make it so that you can tell who came to that world by the enemies that are in that world. Who's he referring to? Is he referring to perhaps the person um, that the, the nobodies kind of take after, meaning that 
Marluxia could actually be in Rapunzel's world, or is he more so meaning like, you know, the organization, um, because of the fact that the organization have control over the nobodies and whatnot. Also, it's interesting that he mentions I'm thinking of the enemy types as a part of the total production this time around. It's interesting that he mentions that. It's kind of unclear as to what he means, but, you know, it is very possible that we may actually see the return of Unversed and perhaps maybe even Dream Eaters. The new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer featured a new nobody design with a scythe and flower petals. Is this particular nobody alluding to a certain former organization member? Nomura replied, I think it's easy to imagine, but I do believe that it will appear in promotional materials sooner or later, so please wait for that. Now you guys can imagine that that response right there gets me so damn excited because um, of course we know who this nobody is sort of referring to. It refers or kind of more so points towards Marluxia. This nobody is like 100% themed after Marluxia. And a lot of people since, you know, seeing that new nobody are saying Marluxia could be returning. Even me myself. Because of the fact that Marluxia is one of my all-time favorite Kingdom Hearts characters that I believe needs a lot more screen time, you know, as a villain. Marluxia needs way more screen time. I was really, really sad to see that he only appeared in Kingdom Hearts um, Chain of Memories because he's such a great villain and he, his personality is so devious and deviant. I just, I freaking love it. Um, but the fact that he mentions uh, it will uh, appear in promotional materials sooner or later, please wait for that. I think that, I don't want to say that it does confirm Marluxia because they might be doing something interesting. Perhaps it's some sort of different alternate version of Marluxia. Perhaps it's his human form. Um, perhaps it's someone who has a relation to Marluxia, who really knows. But um, it's just fantastic. We're going to be seeing this apparent person who this nobody is alluding to soon in promotional materials. And that's the thing, 2016 I feel is going to be a great year for Kingdom Hearts 3 in terms of promotional stuff. Um, but I do want to get into that kind of stuff in a separate video coming up in a few days. So please do look forward to that. But anyway guys, this is the different kind of questions and answers that um, of course uh, were given to us. It's great to see a, sort of, you know, like one last interview type thing before 2015 ends. 2015 is soon to end and that's kind of crazy because this year has gone so freaking damn fast. I think in terms of Kingdom Hearts this year, we have been absolutely just spoiled. Just absolutely spoiled. Like, literally guys, I think 2015 has been a fantastic year for Kingdom Hearts. It's sad to see that we aren't going to be receiving a Kingdom Hearts game this year, but still to the point, everything that we have received has been utterly fantastic. So anyway guys, what do you think about these Q&As that Tetsuya has given to us? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And until next time guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.